16 NUP supporters recently pleaded guilty before the military court on charges related to terrorism, illegal possession of firearms and military attire. These individuals reportedly asked the president for a pardon, begging for leniency. <laughs> NUP President Robert Chagulanyi has now accused the government of coercing party members into accepting charges through torture and intimidation. He alleged that prison authorities, along with Youth Minister Balambaru Gahala, pressured supporters to plead guilty. Chagulanyi challenged the government, stating that if terrorism charges are valid, he should also be arrested as their leader. I mean, supporting the opposition is not terrorism. If so, why didn't they arrest me? It can never be coercion. If people say I've voluntarily committed this crime, indeed we should respect them. Chagulanyi accused the government of avoiding legal challenges such as malicious prosecution by coercing members into pleading guilty to fabricate charges before releasing them. He commended the remaining nine supporters for their resilience. So I want to encourage all of you not to see them in a negative light. Don't criticize them. The party also denied allegations of profiting financially from the continued imprisonment of its supporters. Spirit in Parliament, as we were battling with political prisoners, missing persons and so on, he was in Parliament awarding himself an appreciation, a service award, while we were battling with all of these different issues. So I asked the question, who exactly has made money out of all these problematic endeavors. Chagulanyi warned security forces against breaking the law, stating that all involved would eventually face consequences. This followed allegations against police officials Bob Kagarula, Alex Mwine, and Amdan Tresje, recently sanctioned by the UK government for their alleged role in manhandling MP Francis Zake. And we told them we are going to come for you, whether when or when we are going to come for you. And here we are. But these are not the only culprits. And I'm too sure that those officers who tortured me now, they feel it because among them, there's one I know that had just bought a house in the U.S. A very good morning to you and thank you so much for keeping it on BS Television. This is The Morning Breeze and it's time for the topical discussion as we take you through the latest of what is happening in and around the country. And one of the biggest conversations that is still on is uh, the alleged guilty plea deal, as it was, um, taken out by, this was reported by the Secretary General of the National Unity Platform, but also by the principal of the National Unity Platform, claiming and alleging that the Minister for Youth and Children Affairs had visited these political prisoners and actually asked them to plead guilty so they could get a linear, uh, a much easier sentence or even be helped to get out of jail. That was what he says, although uh, the National Unity Platform has considered and uh, continuously said that these are actually innocent uh, people who were forced into the plea, um, the plea deal, for lack of a better word. And I do have two distinguished guests here with me. I have Counsel George Musisi, a constitutional lawyer who is joining us uh, to break down, and of course, from the National Unity Platform. A very good morning to you, Counsel, and a pleasure having you. Say hello to our viewers. Pleasure being here. Good morning to our viewers and uh, good morning, Mildred. Uh, good, good morning to you. And also, I'll have Honorable Alex uh, Brandon Achintu, who is the spokesperson of the NRM Parliamentary Caucus, and particularly because the person who is being accused here is an NRM member and also a minister of the government. Honorable Brandon, a very good morning to you. Good morning, viewers, and good morning, Mildred. A pleasure having you here, and thank you for your time. I'll start with Council Musisi. Whatever the allegations are, these are coming in from the camp. The, these are coming in from the party to which you subscribe, the National Unity Platform. Have you talked to some of these um, incarcerated people? What exactly did they say? Because they said they were forced into the guilty plea. The minister said they didn't have any kind of discussion as such. All he is willing to do is to help them get um, negotiate or be able to mediate um, either a lighter sentence or have them regain their freedom because they are of a youthful age and that is the docket which he serves. Yeah, thank you. Well, yes, I've spoken to them because I've represented them, uh, the entire group, since mm. 2021 when they were arrested uh, from April 
to around May from different parts of the country. Mm. Uh, I want to provide some, a little background, provide context to this. Okay. Okay. And uh, they were arrested shortly after the elections. And uh, many of them were held in ungazetted places. We looked for them uh, for over a month until they were arraigned in court martial in June 2021. And we've since represented them. We've since applied for bail on three occasions. Uh, we've since uh, asked for an expeditious hearing. And of course, every time people have been talking about uh, release political prisoners, release political prisoners, mm. these are some of the people <coughs> they've been talking about. So as a person who has represented them, I know that the charges against them are frivolous. They are politically motivated. I don't think that uh, they carry any weight. Secondly, I don't think they should be in that court, like uh, they should be tried in a, a, an army court. But then, leading up to the guilty plea, this did not just happen last week. Uh, it's been, there's been a build-up for the last seven or eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, at one point, I remember, I think it was early this year, in around January, they told us, uh, as a legal team, that actually... They, we, meaning those who are incarcerated? Yes, our clients, okay. then, when, as a group of 32. Mm. Uh, four are out on bail, so the 28 are the ones who are still in custody. They told us that, indeed... Uh, some of them had been taken at, on court premises, had been taken to meet some officers who were asking them to plead guilty. That was as early as January this year. Would they identify the officers as well? Unfortunately, they didn't. Or they were just they, uniformed? They, they, they were not even uniformed, they were, but they were taken from cells. By the mere fact they were taken from court cells and taken to a, a, a place at court, it shows that there was some bit of formality to it. Okay. And this is not a rumor <coughs> because we raised it in court. We protested it in court at the subsequent time. We said that uh, why should the state engage our clients outside our back. So this was raised as early as January. Later on, I think sometime in April, these allegations continued from them, saying that actually we are receiving visits uh, in prison. Yeah, we are receiving mm. people visiting us from the state, telling us that the only way out for you is to plead guilty. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, the, the minister you cited, I remember when he was swearing in, the first thing he said is that I will ensure that these people are released. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I said that, how does he know? Being in his docket. Well, but then the, the, the trial was ongoing and no one was, <laughs> had, been, uh, had pleaded guilty or no one had been convicted. So ordinarily, you wouldn't know how the trial would turn out unless you are sure that these people <laughs> are indeed can be released by a political solution. Okay. So they told, um, when we met them in April, as a group, they told us that, yes, actually, our officers were here that very day when we were there. Uh, they said, our officers were here today. They told us that uh, the only way out for, uh, is to engage and uh, plead guilty. And so we said, we, we came still and told the officers, uh, the prosecution, that indeed, if you're contacting our clients, tell us formally. But uh, of course, uh, possibly there was, the, 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 the intention was ensure that the legal team which was representing them is not part of whatever deals. Uh, so we told these people that, one, as lawyers, we cannot advise you to plead guilty to an offense, which you yourselves are telling us that you didn't commit. Because if you're telling me that I didn't do this, then how can I tell you that plead guilty? Most mm. of an offense mm. as serious as treachery. Treachery is only the EPDF Act, but it's akin to treason, and it carries a maximum sentence of death upon conviction. So uh, we, however, told them that at the end of the day, it's a personal decision because it's not us who are incarcerated. It's you who is in custody. So when this back and forth continued, and I'm sure, uh, and as you all, we all know, that uh, even this year alone, the state has not produced a witness in that matter. So uh, I'm sure they got overwhelmed, the, the, the 19 who have so far pleaded guilty. Of course, some of them are, are, have, not yet, have not yet yielded. <coughs> uh, and knowing that possibly this is our only way out of prison. So you've actually received uh, the information of them being called, them being coerced Met. or being... Yes, yes, and well, like I've mentioned, uh, the, the national platform has raised it, or, uh, the, the, the Secretary General has raised it several times, and we have, as a legal team, we've even raised it in court. Mm. We've raised it in court before, of them being given these overtures. Uh, so the, 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 the bigger issue, the bigger concern for all of us, we wouldn't even be looking at only this group, but the issue that people can be held for political differences, and then the, the holding is not for purposes of uh, finding a, a case at all, but for purposes of punishing you, and then exit on your own terms, all right. the terms I, of the person who held you. We illegal. will actually be de delving deeper into that. Honorable Brandon, 
Um, the constitution, which you hold actually and um, swear to abide by, provides for presumption of innocence until proven guilty. Proven meaning by a competent court of law and that is with evidence seduced. When you hear about coercions, quote unquote, as alleged by some of the prisoners and by the people representing them, what does this speak to the constitutionality of the country? Uh, first of all, Uganda has a government and this government has three institutions. Mm -hmm. We have the way they are mentioned and one of them is the judiciary, yeah. which we highly respect. I was off camera trying to discuss with counsel that I have been admiring the processes of courts and the process of parliament, both houses in Kenya, because I gave time to watch and also follow. Now, you have used a very good word, alleged. Yeah. Well, they are not yet guilty. We are still waiting for the court processes to continue. They are still, actually, I heard they are supposed to come on Tuesday somewhere, those that or, plead tomorrow. The 19, the 19 are but, but there are some who already uh -huh. pleaded. Now, you see, you, being in prison, I've not been in prison, but I've visited people in prison. Mm. You can talk so many things. Now, you can give an example that someone, like these political actors who are outside, who are not even, those that have never even tested a police cell, they speak in tongues. You may think they've gotten some kind of, of, of spirit. Now, if somebody's been in prison for all those years, mm -hmm. and these are young lives, like the Minister of, of Youth said, this is my docket, I have to do something. <coughs> Negotiations, people visit prisons. Uh, when our fellow MPs were in prison, I would visit prison. I actually became a very prominent member that people would just say, hey, you have come again. So people can visit, people can have discussions. Sometimes discussions are discreet. Sometimes discussions are not even allowed without the presence of a prison officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to, I've not talked to any of these guys. None of us has been here. At least I've not been there. So I cannot say they, are, they were coerced or they were told to believe. But someone who is in prison and he has a child at home, imagine I have two, two boys. I have one that is four and the other one is eight. If I'm taken to prison for three years and I still have to think about Brandon and Ryan, I, I would come up with something. I need to get out. And counsel later I told you. At the end of the day, they told them, I mean, it's you. Because at the end of the day, it comes to you it, as it an individual. That's very true. But Honorable Brandon, here the biggest issue, it's okay for anyone to visit. It's okay for anyone to be able to join. The bigger conversation of the visit is the allegations that are hinged on a coerced plea guilt or a forced plea guilt. Because this is not something that has been existent for all the other years. But now, all of the sudden, there is a plea of guilt, and they are saying, we were actually forced. We were told this is the only way out. That's the same thing I earlier told you, that if they were coerced, mm. where are we looking at? We are also looking at Ugandans. The government of the NRM has the responsibility for the five years to take care of all Ugandans and its livelihood. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at livelihood of Ugandans, you have also to think about those who are in prison. So if there is any way of negotiation, I will not rule it out that it wasn't there. Why not a speedy but trial if, that they are demanding for? Yeah, I am not a lawyer, but you know courts have procedures. Recently, court pronounced on some electoral uh, cases yeah. when we are just going into an into election cycle. So the procedure of court, uh, I think also I may not talk about it because I'm not well versed, but how they do things, it's very... We have been discussing with counsel. I told him, help me with the knowledge. How does this court issue? There is a ruling of the high court. There is this. Why do we have civilians being tried mm -hmm. in the court martial? Mm -hmm. And he explained, he also said, yeah, we are still hanging there. Uh, two of the, of the judges died without making a decision. But if a judge dies, what are the procedures of replacing? So I don't want to drill into that, the processes, why the speedy, because there are also some other cases there are also, even where I sit in the institution of parliament, there are some procedures that are given priority very, very fast, within a short time. Yeah. And yet the guidelines say different and the laws say different. But the most important thing here is that these are also Ugandans. If they can plead, and like I told you, being in prison, you can say anything. Uh, I remember just Because shortly, you want your freedom. Because you want your freedom. You have a family. And most especially, counsel beer, you will come to court. You, you know, when you have a lawyer, you will think maybe today I'll get out. Counsel will do his best, speak a lot of English, court laws, but you still have to go back. And you have your family. You've been there for three and four years. 
So you still also want to come, your rights are being encapsulated. So these people pleading, we may drill, why, why, but eventually are they getting their freedom? Are they getting At what out? cost? At what cost? Well, now. Getting the freedom, but at what cost? Because there is a consequence to any plea that you enter, whether innocent yeah. or guilty. Yeah, yeah. Now, at what consequence, we may not look at the magnitude of that and say... We're just looking at being uh, free. I would tell you this on camera. If I was taken to prison and I'm there for seven months, mm. and then you tell me, this is the option of you getting out and you get back to join your family. I would definitely say Even yes. when it's in illegal, even when it's unconstitutional. Uh, well, in heaven, we believe we're Christian, that we have purgatory. Probably this is the process of purgatory, looking at... Let's reconcile, let's discuss. So if purgatory is there for you and you want to go to heaven, why don't you enter purgatory? Because there are those that cannot even enter purgatory. Okay. And this is not the first time. We have seen some people here who have been pardoned. We have seen this guy who talked, who talked of making people eat slippers, the ruckuses, and also mm. being appointed. We have some generals in the UPDF army that probably had some sect groups out there, and they're working in government. So we shouldn't deny the rest of these Ugandans, because irrespective of their political differences, they are Ugandans. Okay. They ought to have their rights, they ought to have their freedom. So if that's the scape, if that's the route for these young Ugandans to come out of prison, I've definitely supported them. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Brandon. And, and picking up from the humanitarian point of view that you're giving, any, anyone would not want to be incarcerated. Anyone would not want to stay. And like he says, you would do anything to be out. But we want to look at the ramifications. That, like you said, it, it can attract even to a maximum sentence of um, a death penalty. But is it just the aspect of we want to leave? We've been here, we are, we are fatigued but without looking at the other consequences, both for those who are being incarcerated, but also constitutionally. Because I would believe that even if the, there was, there is a prerogative of mercy, the court case has to take its full, the full trial has to go on, a verdict is made, and probably if uh, they are um, you know, taken in, then the president can exercise a prerogative of mercy and say, I've forgiven them, I let them scot free. Let's look at the consequences, even constitutionally, and mm. what sort of jurisprudence we are setting. Of course, the, the, the consequences are bad. Uh, for starters, uh, for me, I understand them. Mm. Uh, because mm. like uh, Honorable Brandon has said, uh, their immediate need is exit. Freedom. Uh, uh, these people have developed conditions in, 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 in prison. There, there's, uh, I was in court yesterday uh, when, when they were... Uh, the, the, they were trying to do what we call in mitigation after conviction. One has developed hernia, another one has developed cancer, another one has developed pneumonia. They have lost relatives, they have lost livelihoods. So their immediate need is to exit the capacity. And to that extent, I totally understand with them. Mm. Of course, a conviction comes with other consequences. Most of a conviction for a capital offense. Or they, they, they are, you can't stand for some public offices, you can't be employed. In, uh, in, in public institutions, and so on and so forth. Mm. So for me, uh, 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 for the bigger consequences, even uh, if I were to stretch it, because I think it's very narrow-minded for people to even look at it as a noob issue. Because this is not the first one. We saw the people of Kasese, who were, I think it, it, it happened in 2016, 17, mm. thereabouts, over 200 of them, Mildred, incarcerated. Some of them even unfortunately passed away in, in, in custody. About four of them passed away in custody. And they say the, the case is ready, investigations are done, and the case is ready for trial. And they were kept in detention until they had to plead guilty to exit, including the king. One person refused. One person refused to plead guilty. And up to now, his case has never been fixed for hearing. You'd imagine that since he's alone, it would be easier to fix the case. But about three, two years after the other ones pleaded guilty, about five years since the state said it's ready to, to, to hear the matter, hmm. the case has never been fixed for hearing for that one person. Uh, I have heard some people, I don't know how true it is, saying that, you know, the Honorable Segirinya and Honorable Alan negotiated their way out. Mm -hmm. Their co-accused persons are still in custody. So if you are to engage, first of all, they are, and uh, my brother Bernard talks about negotiations, they forget that we're talking about the state holding people uh, for their political differences. Because ordinary negotiations would take place on, on, on bigger issues. 
but state with people with political differences. And then two, if the negotiations are case by case basis, then what does it help? Because if they arrest Mildred and then we negotiate for his, her release, and then another day they arrest Brandon and then negotiate for his release, why shouldn't the discussions be on whether we still believe in this constitution, this thing we call a constitution, or we abandon it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we sell its rule by this? Because it's, 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 it's narrow to negotiate for an individual and then tomorrow the, the trend continues because that will mean that uh, I can tell you that since the 2021 elections, uh, over 300, 400 youths, NU Pilini, were tried in, uh, were, were uh, 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 arraigned in military courts, some in Bombo, some in Mbuya, some in Makindi, for all sorts of reasons, wearing a beret, wearing a t-shirt, so on and so forth. So many of them exited. In fact, we are not talking about 28 and uh, maybe a couple of others. So the issue is, I would rather negotiations be on the broader issue of whether we still believe in this thing called the rule of law, mm. this thing we call the constitution, which is coming to 30 years old. Mm -hmm. However, if it's a negotiation by case by case basis, then it doesn't resolve the key issues in our, in, in our jurisprudence, in our community. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much. And Honorable Brandon, that's where I actually bring it in. It's okay. I hear you, like I said, on the humanitarian basis. But we have laws that are guiding. And uh, if it is a case... There is either the option of alternative dispute resolution, but that not for capital offences at the end of the day. It could probably be plea bargain. We didn't take that route. We have accepted a full-blown trial that is yet to even be concluded. Are we continuously um, disarming our own constitution or are we working towards building constitutionalism in the country and respecting the rule of law? Actually, most, what is interesting is that most of these cases are political. Exactly. And in, in our systems, we have, if you go to the police stations, the bigger ones, you will have an OSU is in charge of political matters. Mm. These guys are only visible during the elections. Uh, for the rest of the days, I don't know what they do, but it's there. Because I sit on the Committee of Defense and Internal Affairs, so I have interest in the roles of police. Now, that's what council is also saying. It's quite confusing, because if these people are charged politically, if today, I'm um, the spokesperson of the NRM caucus, if I made some funny statements here <coughs> yeah, and then I'm rounded off, and then tomorrow they will say, ah, I, probably if I own a gun lawfully, they will start saying, he has guns. Yeah, because of a political statement that is different.